what I'm hoping for in Costa Rica is to spread happiness, joy, love, and just stories together with everybody. You can have this feeling as we're having right now at ECHO in Costa Rica, wherever you go in the world. Like a world which is totally accepting and so open to people's potential and forgiving and really inspiring to one another. That's what I'm hoping for. Please, let's welcome Caroline Larson. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Is it great? You hear me good? Yeah. Awesome. So I came here and I had my speech planned. I felt really ready, comfortable, happy. And then echo happened. <laughs> <laughs> like I heard so many people talk about that before and also here that it is, can be a transforming like, story to be here. It was for me yesterday. Yesterday with all workshops, with the speakers, everything just opened up and I felt the need of crying a lot. I felt there was like an open wound and I cried. And then I went to bed last night and I was asking myself, what is happening? And then I had a dream. I had a dream like the, the TV over there, like a screen. And it was divided in two parts. One was showing a person carrying a really heavy backpack, being reserved, pretty dra dragged down. And on the other half was an open field, a lot of birds just flying all over, just free. And as I was watching this in my dream, I realized this person was about to die. I was about to let go of something extremely heavy. And as that vanished away, the whole TV screen was just filled with that open space and all those birds flying. This is something I never shared on stage before. And I'm not feeling comfortable anymore. I'm pretty scared, but it's okay. Because with you all, I feel that I feel comfortable sharing this. And my story basically started a couple of years ago. I was in New Zealand with my sister playing golf. And we went to this lunch restaurant in Christchurch. And as we sat down there, after 10 minutes, everything just started shaking. My Chinese noodles, jumped up in the air and down on the floor again. The windows were crashing. And I looked at the table and my sister's eyes were screaming, we have to run for life. We ran out on that street. Buildings were falling apart. Ground was opening itself and people were running all over. After 15 seconds, the earthquake of New Zealand stopped. Two seconds, dead silence. And after that, every alarm in the whole city went on and people scream. I never felt so small in my life before. Never felt so powerless. And then I realized 15 seconds, that's how fast it can go. That's time. I've been working my whole life to make results on the golf course. Nothing is ever so defined as when you come in after a round of golf and you have your scorecard and you have a number. Because that number tells if you were good or bad. That's what everybody's gonna judge you for. And I've been working so hard for those results to be somebody that people could talk to. The better you are, the more people talk to you. That was my reality. And there in New Zealand, I learned something completely else. I learned about that the time I have, it's not about how much time I have, but about what I make with that time. That is really important. So I came home from Sweden, from New Zealand to Sweden, with that perspective in mind. And then I realized just 
two weeks after that my knee was swollen. And it's quite natural for an athlete who's training a lot, always on the run, pushing it to the limits. I just went for a checkup. And I came into that room with those white walls and my doctor was sitting down. He looked at me, right me in the eyes, and then he asked me, Caroline, do you want to live? We found cancer in your right knee. And chemotherapy or radiation cannot save you. This is the type, if you want to survive, you need to, cho to take that choice of amputate your leg above the knee. And my whole world crashed one more time. It felt like I had to run again. It was shaking so much, I was convinced there was nothing left to live for. Nothing at all. And as I came home that day to my parents' house, we live in a really small city. I was standing there by the kitchen table and I had this simple water glass in my hand. And I looked at this water and I thought, I go up every morning, take that water glass in my hand, go out from the kitchen, like the most simple action ever. This is gonna be one of the most challenging actions after an amputation. So I took that water glass, went out of the room, and I felt how that felt. 504 hours, that is three weeks. What would you do with that time? If 15 seconds can change a life, what can 504 hours do? I saw those three weeks as a preparation, as something I could choose. So I went to London and not to buy a Metro card. I wanted to walk really far past those big buildings and really feel how that felt. I was horseback riding, playing golf, bicycling, walking in high heels. And every time I made a farewell of something to appreciate that, it felt like I was opening something for something new to learn. Three weeks later, I walked into the same hospital with the white walls, sterile environment. And as I laid down in that bed, I just thought, I need to wiggle my toes one last time. So I did that. I woke up to a completely new life, totally different. Everything looked and felt different. And the pain I was feeling was if somebody had a rope around my foot, pulled it really hard. Meanwhile, water with bubbles were flushing through my leg. And every bubble was like a knife. This moment lasted for five days, that intense pain. And in a moment where you think you would be drained out of energy and really sad, I was feeling strengthened. Because the people around me at the hospital, taking care, being there, it was like if they had love in their hands. It was like if they were transferring an energy to me to be able to go through that really tough moment in my life. And on the fifth day, I went to the rehab room and what I saw in there just changed everything. I saw a golf club. And that golf club, I took in my hands and I just thought, I'm gonna swing it again. So I took it down on one leg, felt how supported I was, and swung it up and back. There was a lot of people telling me that life cannot be so good, Carol, now, when you went through this change. It has to be verse, because somehow it feels really important in the society to value everything as good and bad all the time. And I choose to see it as with open eyes. Because if I already decided it's gonna be bad, I'm definitely gonna, gonna be standing here on a stage in Costa Rica. So I wanna see it with open eyes. And I was tired of those people telling me my life was going to be bad. 
And that day, I read an article. I read an article about a girl in the same age as I. On the front page, it said, I'm never scared showing that I got one leg. She had a sm huge smile on the picture, and I felt instantly connected to this girl. I felt we shared so much, and then I thought, okay, she inspires me to go for my dream. I'm gonna go for it. I went back to golf, and I played my first tournament two months after the surgery on one leg. And that was because of her inspiration, what she gave me in this moment. After this tournament, I got a call. Caroline, there's coming a computerized leg from the United States to Sweden. It's the first time we get such a complicated thing. We've been waiting for it seven years. Can you try it tomorrow? And I thought, what? Tomorrow? Don't they have somebody? I went there and I received this leg. I was incredibly happy. And you think, when you enter this world of prosthetics and you get used to so much, there is like 500 different foots. <laughs> this was like the newest iPhone. So it was a big thing. <laughs> so I was really, really happy. And then I was going to try the foot. And then I saw at this particular day, this girl, Madeline, in the article was going to be one of the speakers. Yes, I finally get to meet her. I finally get to say thank you for all the inspiration. And as I came to the event, I talked to a lot of people. I asked, where is Madeline? And one man came up to me and he said, Madeline, she died three days ago in a heart attack. And she was the one who was going to have that leg that you're wearing. Then my world broke again because it felt so unfair. It felt so unfair that I had a chance of receiving such a privileged thing because somebody was leaving Earth. I felt the need to tell somebody in her family or somebody around that the leg was with me, but I couldn't. It was too emotional. I never met her, even though I felt such a connection with her. And two weeks after, I received an email. It was from Madeleine's boyfriend. He, she was going to participate in a TV show in Sweden. And he has been watching loads of clips on her because it was going to be broadcasted. And every time the video stopped, it was recommended videos coming up. And every time a video appeared on me. And he thought, why not? I write this girl. He wrote. He didn't know what to say. But he had an idea about a project that could honor her. And I immediately responded that I would really like to help. And that I got the leg that she was meant to get. Another year just passed by. Madeline did not only give me the leg, she gave me my boyfriend too. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a talk that basically got created at Echo. And I want to be a th huge thanks to her and also to you. She learned me something that about time, about doing what you love, and as in New Zealand, I never forget those 15 seconds. The awakening I got when I got the diagnosis about what really matters, about the true value, the core values, that we are the ones that choose all the time. Last year when I played my last professional tournament, I raised the buckle to the sky, really happy, and I received the prize. I looked into that box, and in that box was a new watch. A new time was coming. So I ask you, is it a new time for you now? Thank you. Thank you. 
I felt so strengthened talking in there because it was like not talking to an audience it was talking to friends so being up there on stage showing vulnerable sides of, of my me myself and my story was was strengthened in one way really scary at the beginning and now I just feel so relieved